Every day brings new light To help us on our way Always taking my breath Whether sun or rain The wind will carry us over That horizon we see Is getting closer Apparently this display, the shop counter from the original Burra Choppin Hall, pretty good uh, mannequins. Oop, don't like this one. This one's interesting. Shop counter, originally from the Yagu General Store. You will see that we've been to Yagu in previous episodes. Well, here's something that was new to me. It's a washing machine, so that thing goes up and down, and those cups massage the clothes. I don't know what got on this side, whether it's a spin machine or something, but in 1930, it was the easy petrol powered washing machine. Equipped with three cups, cups, sponges that move up and down, central spoke also rotates and moves the cups slowly around the bowl. The model also has a spin dryer at the end, spinning out wet clothes. The petrol tank and the engine were underneath the washing machine. And here we go, most museums always have a fabulous display of glass bottles. Sadly a lot of the ones you see around in the bush are all broken up and rarely see them intact like this. bunch of different irons, or oh, oh, knew all about the ones that you set on the old hot top and things, but like the old petrol washing machine, petrol irons as well. Of course kerosene. So yeah, you wouldn't want to have a leaky petrol tank on that. Have some explaining to do about your white shirt. Wow. Cool museum. Very nice, very fresh, very clean. Um, I understand a lot of the um, display boxes here were all out of the, uh, well not all of them, but the majority of them were all out of the um, Perth Mint. So uh, the lovely display cases for displaying some of the older antiques. But yeah, definitely a must come and visit and view the Museum of Westonia. One last little spot to go, this big box here beside me on my left hand side. It's a recreation of a um, little mine. So you go in and we'll give it a go. I don't know how well it'll view in here, but we'll go and have a look, eh? So we go in, what looks like a tunnel. It says to press the black button on the left start vibrating tunnel. You might need to ease up on the gear they're locked in, otherwise I'll have no one at the dance on Saturday night. You'll get your fancy pants to the dance on Saturday night, Briggsy. Don't you worry about that. As I said, there wasn't any shortage of great facilities. Nice little picnic areas, places for the kids to play, great toilets. And uh, so I'm just going down here where you got the bowls, tennis, swimming pool. There's a skateboard, <laughs> there's a skateboard half pipe over there too. So uh, you yeah, bring all the toys. Alrighty. You might recognize this shop from before. It's take two. <laughs> I 
I came down to the, uh, the swimming pool. It was uh, a little early. I see they don't open the pool until three. So, uh, here am I now. It's about 4.30. So, uh, we'll see if we can get in now. It's still pretty warm. Still in the, uh, the mid-30s. Breeze has got up a bit though. And the sun's still up. So this old power pub, originally built in 1898, operating as a Royal Exchange Hotel in a gold mining town of Bonnyvale, which is 14 kilometres north of Coolgardie. The hotel was sold by then owner William Austin in 1914 and relocated here to Westonia in February 1915 to service the bludgeoning mining industry in Westonia. Um, it was known as the Edna May Hotel and was first owned by Leslie Stewart and the licensee was Gilmore and Stone. So no swimming pool available. Oh, well, the next best thing, the old amber liquid. Goes down well. Here's to the, uh, the Edna May Tavern, Westonia Tavern, whatever you call it these days. Heritage building, beautiful inside. Lovely bar, lovely lounge at the back, and it's got a, uh, a restaurant further back there as well. By the way, we've done it with the place, it's good. It tastes good too. What a trip to West Oden. If you ever, let's say, in between Perth and Kalgoorlie or something, check this place out. Check the times of what places are open. They do tend to be a little bit more flexy around here, but you can always rely on the cabin. Sounds like she's open all the time, but uh, super relaxed. Could probably stay a week here. Westonia Tourist Park. Best entry, obviously this way. Slightly shorter parks to the right, as you can see there. And then over here on the left where I'm parked, we've got some lovely big, long, parking base. Yeah. Outdoor facilities, cooking facilities, great tables, chairs, stainless steel benches, ovens, cooktops, um, massive barbecue there. Look at this, a beautiful wooden, feels like a bar, bit of a lounge, television, refrigerator, um, yeah, washing facilities and behind all this. Um, clotheslines down the back, shade cloths, fans, um, heaters even. You can turn on and off if it gets a bit cold. But yeah, you cannot fault this. It's beautiful. You get my chef's hat on. So yeah, dinner's coming along pretty well. Go down here. Chicken's good. Onion on. It's not far away. Well, as you know by now, we normally do our farewells from our caravan parks. So, yep, I've gone from the Westonia Caravan Park. I knew that a, uh, a good place to say farewell is out at the Farewell Hello Westonia corner. It's really uh, quite fitting. So, uh, thank you Westonia, had an awesome time. And if you had an awesome time, just remember to uh, click the like, subscribe, follow, comment button on the Sweet As RVing page there and uh, help us bring a little bit more content to you. My next uh, trip is westwards on our way to Meriden, I believe. But uh, we're going to see if we can find the bunny proof fence, so stay tuned. Alrighty, made it to number one rabbit proof fence it was the longest fence in the world it commenced here in 1901 uh, with a completed length uh, of 1837 kilometers so it went from here um, it was completed in Esperance in the south um, in 1903 and uh, it went from here 
north to Port Hedland and it was completed in 1907. Yeah, so the fence, there was actually three fences. So uh, there was this one here that went from Esperance down here and went all the way up into Port Hedland, way up here. And uh, then there was, uh, well, from what I can understand, it's this one here and then that one there. Um, this one here's quite um, up to date, I think, because um, that was uh, where we were with uh, Shark Bay, I think. So, I've rocked into the big town. It's actually surprised me how big this place is, Meriden. It's caught me out. <laughs> the, uh, there's a railway museum over here. From the information center parked behind that at the moment heaps of space there for vehicles got to go over and get some supplies at the iga um, but i think uh, one place i wanted to go to was the military museum so that'll be my first port of call so as you can see park me motor down there information center iga and we've got a uh, a railway track and over on that side is the military museum and over on this side is the railway museum. I've driven past this museum so many times and wanted to call in and check it out. Now's my opportunity. Here we go. So first point of call, First World War I believe in this room. We move on into the Second World War. You get a good shot of that, but it's a um, submarine trench art. And it's done with some old projectiles and brass and things. And then up over here, made from a 4.5 uh, inch howitzer shell, ashtray. Very talented. So I'm not one for aircraft identification, but I would say this is a uh, Huey. Oh, I was going to say Iroquois. Of course it is a Iroquois as well. It's a beauty. Alrighty, now do I have some interesting facts here. So, the wheat belt. Do you wonder how flat the wheat belt is? So between Southern Cross, where I was a few days ago, and Cundinan, where I haven't been yet, 200 kilometers. And the land surface drops only 50 meters in that 200 kilometers. So it's got a, a slope of 25 centimeters per kilometer. So Meriden Peak, which is just up here, as a part of an ancient Yilgarn block formed over 27,000, well no, 27,000 million years ago. Over time the rock mass has been broken down and combined heat effects, cold, rain, wind, leaving rock like it is. So Meriden Peak is 369 metres above sea level and 49 metres higher than the town of Meriden. So it appears, it appears rather tall or even taller than that because of how flat the terrain looks. So uh, the railway dam was built um, 1893 to 1896. The catchment around um, the Meriden Peak is four kilometres long. Um, the rock catchment area is 400 hectares. Meriden's annual rainfall of around 330 millimetres gives a potential water capture of 45 million litres. And there you go, from my angle here, you can see straight across to the, the channel which um, diverts water into the dam. Oh, feet are just loving it. Oh, sure is nice and cool up here. Got the breeze coming in behind me, it's nice. 
don't know where I'm heading to. The last signpost was back there. I'm looking for, oh yeah. Don't panic, I'll be fine. Don't send a rescue crew. We'll get up to the peak here. Don't need to be very high though. Look at that. Oh. Good timing. Actually, I think good timing, this is it. Right here. Get all set up. What a way to okay. Here we go. Old versus new. It's the new coming past the old railway station here at Meriden. So it's the passenger rail. It's um, come from once, I guess, come from Kalgoorlie and the other one's come from Perth meeting here. That was quite timely. So there you go, one of my first uh, silo arts, I think it is, apart from the mini one at um, Westonia. So yeah, I think the artist has got the colours and the geodesic shapes and uh, it's just something to signify the importance of the, uh, the agriculture to uh, Meriden, I believe. Rorty Ho just about settled up the wagon. Just turn the gas off and pull the slide in. So yeah, all looking good. Hey, good night's sleep here at uh, Meriden 24 hour RV park up at Meriden Peak. And uh, yeah, nice uh, quiet night, it's a nice starry night. So yeah, haven't quite left Meriden yet, but uh, we're going to tick off the last few little bits and pieces and uh, look for our next uh, stop hopefully for another couple of nights, so I can relax a little bit. Spot you soon. Alrighty, made it to me location for the night. Man, it's so nice. I wish I could probably spend a couple of nights. Watch this space. Talking about space, look what I'm copping right there. It's a good spot. I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag on this one. I will say that it's just down the road from um, Meriden um, and it's got the word hill in it, that's all I'm going to say, but it is uh, not hard to find and uh, it's precious places like these because uh, there already are these, there's a little bit of rubbish around the place that you don't like to see, but uh, <laughs> that's a good spot, catch a little bit of the breeze in the evening, it's starting to um, be a little bit more of a, uh, a, a help rather than a hindrance as you can probably hear if you can hear but look at the space behind me so this is where I've rocked up there's the van um, there's not much room for anybody else I'm sorry I've, I've put the put the cones out across the road <laughs> now nah, it's, it's certainly a good spot to uh, I'm going to be able to watch the, uh, the sun go down. It's going down over there, as you can probably guess. It's in the eyes. Um, and uh, I don't think I'll have any light pollution. If not, I'll run over there and knock on the door and tell them to, do you mind turning the light off? What a great stay here in the place, finishing with Hill. <laughs> Man, it was really, really nice. The van you can see has moved. Um, the reason for that is that yeah, yesterday there was a bit of a threat of a thunderstorm and the old radar didn't look too good. So I thought, mm, rather be, rather than being down there where I'd have to sort of come up hill and um, yeah, run the risk of skidding and things, I'll just bring it up top here and then I really only have a flat run from there to the road. So um, 
Dude, what can I say about this place? It was beautiful. The view is fantastic. Incredible. Um, sunsets were amazing. I uh, had two of them. Uh, sunrise, yeah, well, I was a little bit lazy, but I did see this morning's one and it wasn't too bad. Uh, the night sky, yeah. There was a little bit of um, night pollution from um, Meriden, maybe out here. I could just see the lights of Meriden, but this side was just pitch dark and, yeah, saw some good, um, a good, uh, what do you call them, shooting stars. I think I saw a, a meteor or something too. It was long and it was glowing big time. Um, so, yeah, we're not going very far. Hook here, back onto, the uh, back onto the main road again, going down here, going to check out a lake. Hopefully it's uh, not too busy and hopefully my road in's going to be good. And uh, yeah, stay there for another couple of days. And rest and relax and enjoy and yes, kill some time between uh, Jude coming back from Adelaide and me being in Perth. So, see you soon, down the road. Made it just down the road. Sounds like a broken record, didn't it? <laughs> Made it just down the road to the next destination. There are so many great destinations to stop off when you're traveling between, especially Kalgoorlie and Perth. And we've been to a couple of them, um, and this is one that we've been to. And uh, it's got water in it this time. We were here, um, I don't know, probably two and a half, three years ago, and yeah, there was, there was no water. And we laughed because uh, it's called Ski Lake. And with no water, it's like, well, that's a silly name. But no, it's all apparent now why it's called Ski Lake. It's uh, an interesting color. It's been stirred up a little bit with the, uh, oh, stirred up a little bit with the winds, but man, it looks beautiful. And, uh, you know, you'd, you'd swear it was a bit of uh, tropical paradise if these, uh, what do you call them, cabanas or something like that? They had the old uh, little drapes and the old day beds and everything on it. It would be quite nice. So uh, I'll take a walk down to the old boat ramp. And I um, can't remember the actual name. I think it was like Bandy Lake or something. But we'll go and hopefully be able to pronounce it a bit better. There you go. A couple load of that. That's the old farmer's paddocks out there. And there's two caravans. Me and this other bike just here at the moment. And look at that, Ski Lake. You just about swear you're down the beach. It's nice sand. The smell, oh, the salty air, you can smell it. Super flat. So here's the boat ramp. One or two tire marks. Weekend's tomorrow. Today's Friday, so might be some uh, weekend boaters. Bundy. B double A N D double E. Bundy Lakes. So uh, so yeah, water skiing. Where are we? As I say. It's the highway up over the side here. And uh, ski in a, an anti clockwise direction to avoid confusion.
Alrighty. Well, as you can see from the fading light, this is not going to be a cooking show to the end. But I couldn't let a cookout in the open go past with an absolute cracker. A cracker of a sunset. I'm at, um, as you might as well know, I am at Ski Lake with, um, there's only one other van here. Peace and quiet. It's so beautiful. Look at that. It's not bad. There we go. We've got some fries on one side, some prepped kumaras in the middle, and some crumb chicken pieces. And the grill is working over time. Alrighty, moving on. Sweet as RVing is moving on. We're leaving um, Ski Lake, Bandy Lake, and um, heading down the road, not too far. Gonna find a bit of elevation, and uh, another little spot, a little bit of history maybe. Um, big uh, shout out to the uh, the Shire or the council, whoever looks after this joint, maybe a club, um, but um, it's it's a great little park for, for us travelers and, um, and recreational. Um, people uh, out there on the on the water as well. There was a bit of uh, water skiing going on, but a uh, wakeboarding and things. So it was lovely to see it. So it's a beautiful spot. Um, cleanliness as well. There's there's a little bit of paper hanging around. Some people seem to think that they can throw some um, what do you call it paper or even bottles and cans in the um, in the fireplace. There's a rubbish tin over there. Please use it because. Um, the paper doesn't always stay in the fire yeah, and, and you think that oh yeah we'll put the paper and it'll be burnt tonight somebody will have a fire but fire ban between November and February I think we can't have it so next thing the paper blows but other than that yeah it's a it's a great great place to park it and stay and um, the shower facilities um, I found uh, we went I went for a swim in the lake and man it is salty as buggery it sticks to you and um, it all gets in your eyes and bits and pieces it's it's nice to be able to have that uh, there's a single shower in there, cold water, and it freshens you right up, it's good. And there's a single toilet in there, that's okay. Um, but yeah, thumbs up. Um, we're going to move on, so uh, follow us on the next adventure there. Uh, remember to uh, click down below there, um, the subscribe, the follow, the like, comment, do it all. Let us know how we're going. It helps us uh, keep the, uh, the channel being created there. Um, much appreciated. Sweet as RVing, on the road again.